Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby with another powerful point to ponder as we spend meaningful moments with God's word. Thank you for joining me again with this final installment of a series that we began on Monday on the world's most dangerous weapon, and that is gossip. I hope you have been blessed by this week. I hope it has been both inspirational and informative for you. And I hope you'll take that Psalm 39, one pledge. And that is that I will be careful not to sin with my tongue, that I will keep my mouth with a muzzle on it while I'm in the presence of wicked people who love to gossip. You'll take Psalm 39, one pledge. Now this week we've been talking about the misuse of the tongue, uh, but we wanna close this out by talking about the proper use of the tongue. If gossip is a uh, speech that is designed to damage and destroy people, then the best way to prevent a negative is by stressing a positive. Um, one of the ways that uh, a person is able to remain sober from the disease of alcoholism is by doing constructive and positive things. You not only have to say no to something, which is alcohol, you have to say yes to something. Always remember that, that life is about saying yes to something, something that is good and constructive and beneficial. It's in the, the word yes, is a man that's you saying an amen i'm saying amen to this for my life uh do not say amen to gossip so we're going to close by talking this series on gossip by talking about some healthy gossip if you will or uh, maybe i should say because there's another word that sounds like gossip and guess what it is what's the word that christians should be talking about that sounds like gossip here it is Gospel, gospel, both of them, what, G-O-S? So let's move from gossip to gospel. You know, whenever you go to the doctor and the doctor examines you, sometimes, especially if you're sick, the doctor will say, stick out your tongue. And then you'll say, ah, you stick out your tongue and they'll look at your tongue, why? Because they can determine how healthy you are physically based on what's going on and examining your tongue. And just like you can determine someone's physical health based on their tongue in their mouth, the Bible teaches you can tell someone's spiritual health based on their tongue or what they say. We looked at this earlier, but let's review once again what James says uh, in James chapter three. He says, not many of you should become teachers, fellow, my fellow believers, because you know, we who teach will be judged more strictly. We all stumble in many ways. All of us stumble in different ways. One way you stumble might not be the way somebody else stumbles, but we still stumble in different ways. Anyone who is never at fault in what they say is perfect or mature. In other words, if you're going to stumble, make sure that you don't stumble by the things that you say. Make sure that you don't stumble with gossip. And he's talking to leaders in the church. He says those who teach, which are preachers and Sunday school teachers and leadership, he says, be careful. I'm going to judge you more strictly. We all stumble, but I don't want you to stumble by the things you say, because uh, if you can avoid stumbling, having fault, he used the word fault, never at fault in what you say is to be mature, or the Greek word is telos, or to be perfect, able to keep their whole body, which is to say that if you learn to be disciplined with your tongue, it's going to give you what you need to be disciplined in the other areas of your life. If you're trying to improve as an individual, the first thing that you should improve on is the things that you say, what you say, what you say. In fact, what you say affects what the way you feel, the way you talk. Many people think, well, I gotta feel my way into an action. No, you at your way into a feeling. You talk your way, you start saying it. You gotta say it, you gotta say it. 
and then you gotta seize it. You gotta see it, then you say it, then you seize it. That's the order. You see something in your mind, you see it, you say it, and then you see it, seize it. And you, you, you gotta see it before you see it, or you won't see it. So we wanna close by talking about speech control and self speech control. Remember he says that, that if you, if you don't stumble in the things you say, it affects your whole body. So speech control contributes to self-control. If you can get your speech under control, you can get every other area of your life under control. Speech control leads to self-control. Now I want to read a scripture in Proverbs chapter 13. The book of Proverbs, Proverbs 13 and verse 3 says, Those who guard their lips preserve their lives, but those who speak rashly will come to ruin. Guard your lips. We want to use our tongue for constructive purposes. So let me give you what James says are the three ways we should use our tongue in closing out. In James chapter 3 and verse 1, it says, Not many of you should become teachers, my fellow believers. So the first way we should use our tongue that is legitimate is to be a teacher. Use your tongue, not for gossip, but for gospel, the gospel of teaching the word of God, the truths of God, the wisdom of God, or life lessons that you have learned. So number one, use your tongue for proclamation. Secondly, look at James chapter three and verse nine. James three and verse nine says, with the tongue, we praise our Lord and Father. So not only use your tongue for proclamation, but use your tongue for glorification. Your tongue should be used to the glory of God and gossip does not bring glory to God. Move from gossip to gospel because the tongue should be used for proclamation. He says, we need some teachers, but, but be aware that teachers are going to be judged more harshly so use your tongue for teaching or proclamation. Use your tongue for the glory of God. And then finally, use your tongue for edification. Proclamation, glorification, edification. The word edification means to build people up. Look at what James says in James chapter 3, verse 9 and 10. Tongue. With our tongue, we praise our Lord and Father. That's glorification. And with it, we curse human beings who have made. In other words, he says it's inconsistent to glorify God one minute, one minute, then the next person, minute, cussing somebody out who has been made in the likeness, uh, in God's likeness. You can't say you love God and then you curse what God has created. Out of the same mouth comes praise and cursings. My brothers and sisters, this should not be. In other words, we should not use our voices to curse people, we should use our voices to help people, to bless people, to edify people. That's what he's saying. So here in James, we have three uses of the tongue. One is proclamation, being a teacher, using wisdom, your wisdom, your life experiences to bless someone else. Secondly, glorification, giving God glory through our tongue, praise and worship, and then finally edification, constantly using your tongue to build people up. The only reason I am doing these powerful points to ponder and the only reason I'm in a situation that I am in to be a blessing to only other people, the only reason I've been the pastor of one of the great churches in America, St. Stephen Baptist Church, the only reason I am the president of a historical black college university was because somebody used their tongue to build up and encourage an insecure, underachieving black boy here in Louisville, Kentucky, because that defines who I am. But a man came into my life. My parents put planted the seed, but it was a man who was an alcoholic named Charles Mims Jr. who watered the seed. And his watering, his edification, his tongue. Uh, he was a great friend of Muhammad Ali. The reason I preached Muhammad Ali's eulogy, I hope you'll go online and look it up on YouTube when I eulogize Muhammad Ali. But the reason I was able to do all my success was because when I was a teenager, 
he used his tongue to tell me, boy, you're brilliant. You're sharp. 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 He used his tongue to edify me. He had an alcohol problem. He wrote a book called If I Make My Baby Hell. I was able to write the forward to the book before he passed. But he once found out that I had been gossiping about him. And he writes about it in the book that I was gossiping about him. He saved my life and I turned around and gossiped about him and he wrote about it in the book. And this is what he wrote about in the book about my gossip. He said, the reason I was able to get help from my alcoholism was because my nephew, Kevin Cosby, went out and found some people from Alcoholic Anonymous and they contacted me and helped me. I was gossiping about him, but it was gossip in order to help him. Because remember, it is not gossip. If you're part of the problem or part of the solution, and if you're talking about somebody behind their back because they have a, a problem with their life and you're trying to be the part of the solution, that's not gossip. That's gospel. I want to close this series by giving you some poems. One is by one of my favorite poets, Edgar Guest. And this is what Edgar Guest said. He said, a fella can't help hearing hateful things about another, but a fella can be careful not to tell them to his brother. Sit and listen if you want to when the spiteful things are said, but don't pass on the scandal. Keep a still tongue in your head. Spread no little tale of evil whether right or wrong. You may barken unto gossip, but don't send the tale along. That's good sound advice for one of the great poets in American history, Edgar Albert Guest. And then finally, the great poem by Will Carleton. And this is what Will Carleton said. Boys flying kites haul in their white winged birds. You can't do that way when you're flying words. Careful with fire is good advice we know. Careful with words is 10 times doubly so. Thoughts unexpressed may sometimes fall back dead, but God himself can kill them when they're said. I think that kind of summarizes everything we've been trying to say this entire week. Let us use our tongue for proclamation, for the glorific God's glorification, and for other people's edification. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, this has been a wonderful week of learning, of studying, and being challenged to do better and be better. So help us not to hear this week's lesson and just file it away and forget it, but help us to stop and make a pledge, the Psalm 39, one pledge. And when we, when, we, um, when we sin and forget the pledge and it comes to us that we've been gossiping, maybe not as this person who said it, but just being one of those trees that can that is ignited to spread the gossip, please forgive us. Help us to repent and to use our tongue, not for gossip, but for gospel. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, this has been a great week of study and, and learning and growing and maturing and developing. And I wanna thank you for being with me this week. Um, some of you have sent me some, some, some texts and some some emails and some Twitter posts in which you've asked me to address certain things and I'm going to address some everything from marriage to single life to I mean we're going we're going to really go deep this year y'all so if you got some real issues that you'd like for me to to look at the word of God on and address and respond to in the powerful points to ponder please contact me um, here at St. Stephen Church uh, I, I can't thank you enough. Contact me. There's the email. Info, info at ssclive.org. Maybe you're going through some things. Maybe it could be anything from domestic violence 
to childhood trauma. I don't care what it is. The word of God speaks to real life issues. It does. And if you send it, I'm going to get to it. So just get in contact with me, email me here at uh, info at ssclab.org. If you don't have a church home, I want you to do something. I want you to do it right now. Contact us, email us at newstart at ssclab.org. Uh, uh, Write and say, you know what? I'm joining now. I need to be a part of a church. I want to be in this ministry. I want to be a part of this ministry. I want to go to another level in my life. So contact us and, and become a part of the church. And I want to thank you also for just being so kind and being with us and getting the word about, out about the powerful points to ponder. This is Saturday. Tomorrow uh, is uh, the Lord's Day. And uh, so we're going to have worship tomorrow. Uh, the pre-worship experience begins at nine o'clock with, with Sister Crystal, the ever gifted Crystal, Sister Crystal uh, and, and, and her, her, her team. Uh, so join us at nine o'clock and then we'll have actual worship, praise and worship. Then I'll come with a word from the Lord uh, that I want to share with you uh, tomorrow. I've got a word I want to share with you. So be with us. Uh, tomorrow. God bless you. Thank you so much for being with us. And as we close, as we do every day during COVID-19, don't forget to stay safe, stay sane. And if you can, stay home. I'll see you in worship tomorrow. God bless you.